Hi, this video is going to take a look at the SAT math topic of proportions. So we're going to take a look at the definition of a proportion, how to solve a proportion, uh, how to solve for unknowns within a proportion, and then I've got five uh, SAT problems from the official practice SATs that have to do with proportions that we're going to solve and explain. Let's take a look. Okay, so what is a proportion? A proportion is just two ratios or fractions uh, that are equal to each other. So 3 fifths equals 9 over 15. That's a proportion. Two fractions are equal. You can see that the fraction on the right is just 3 times on the numerator and 3 times on the denominator. So what's an example of a proportion? Well, if we have a length of chain, we've got this big heavy chain, um, it's going to be proportional to its weight. So if we had three feet of the chain, it might weigh 11 pounds. So if we had six feet of the chain, then it would weigh 22 pounds. And if you see that proportion, three over 11 equals six over 22. So now solving proportion, we can notice that in back in that proportion, three fifths equals nine over 15. The two diagonals are gonna multiply to the same thing when you've got a proportion. So the 3 times the 15 and the 5 times the 9 are both going to equal 45. We're essentially putting it over a common denominator, and that's why this works. So the 3 times the 15 and the 9 times the 5, the two diagonals are always going to be equal when two fractions are set equal to each other. So we can use that to solve for an unknown. So if we've got 6 over 15 equals x over 10, we can cross multiply the 6 times the 10 and the 15 times the x and set them equal to each other. So 60 is going to equal 15x. Divide both sides by 15 to solve for x and we get x equals 4. Now when we're looking at word problems uh, it helps to use labels so that we know that we get the right thing in the numerator and the right thing in the denominator. So in this simple example here we've got three pounds of chocolate that cost $18 how much would it cost for seven pounds? So I'm gonna go ahead and put the pounds in the numerator and the cost in the denominator. Now it doesn't matter which way you do it, uh, but it does matter that you're consistent. So I like to write the labels right out, pounds and cost, so that when I set up my proportion, I know to put three in the numerator because that's where I'm putting pounds, and 18 is my cost, so that goes in the denominator. And that's set equal to seven in the numerator because that's how many pounds, and we don't know the cost. So that's where our, our cost is going to go in the denominator. So it really helps to write out um, what are you going to put in the numerator in the denominator so that you don't um, confuse them and you can keep them consistent. Then from there we can just cross multiply. 3 times x equals 18 times 7. So we get 3x equals 126. Divide by 3 to get our final answer and that's going to be 42. Okay, let's take a look at these five sample problems having to do with proportions. All right, problem one says a quality control manager at a factory selects seven light bulbs out of every 400 light bulbs that he's gonna inspect. At this rate, how many light bulbs will be inspected if the factory produces 20,000 light bulbs? So let's set up our proportion. So, in the numerator, I'm going to put the amount selected, and in the denominator, I'm going to put the amount produced. And I always like to write these out uh, just to keep track and make sure that I'm putting the right thing in the numerator and the right thing in the denominator. So if we have 7 selected out of 400, then that's going to equal, we don't know how many we've selected, but we do know that there's 20,000 produced. Now we're going to cross multiply, 400x equals 140,000, divide by 400, and you get x equals 350, choice B. All right, the next problem, ran a sample of 200 cars, shows that there's three defects. At that same rate, 
how many defects would there be out of 10,000 cars? So we're going to set this up. I'm going to do cars in the numerator and defects in the denominator. And again, it doesn't matter which one you do as long as you keep consistent. So 200 cars gets us three defects. We've got 10,000 cars. How many defects is that going to get? So the unknown is X right there. Cross multiply 200 times X equals 3 times 10,000. And then we're going to divide by 200. X equals 150. That's going to be choice A. Now, when you're doing these, as these numbers get bigger, um, one thing about proportions is you can cancel or reduce um, this direction and this direction um, because those are just fractions. So we could reduce, if this fraction could be reduced, we could reduce it. But you can also reduce in this direction as well as this direction. So to make the math easier, we could have reduced and said 200 goes into 10,000 and got 50 times and then 1x equals 50 times 3 or 150. So we just divided the 200 and the 10,000 by 50. And sometimes that just helps the math um, and makes it easier. But don't get confused. This is only when we've got a proportion and two fractions set equal to each other. We can never cancel on this way and fractions in other situations, it's just when it's set up as a proportion. So that help that might help people. All right, the third problem. Nate walks 25 meters in 13.7 seconds. And then how long will it take him for four minutes? So we're going to set up the proportion. Meters and seconds. So he's going 25 meters in 13.7 seconds. Now we want to find out how far he's going in four minutes. Now notice we're putting seconds here. So we just have to multiply four times 60 to get 240 to convert it to minutes. I mean to convert it to seconds. So we've got four minutes. We're going to have 60 times that or 240 for seconds. Now we can cross multiply 13.7x equals 6,000. 6,000 divided by 13.7 gets us 437.95 something. Um, that rounds to the closest one, 450 choice B. All right, the next one. Um, Plant A is 20 centimeters, plant B is 12 centimeters. The ratio of heights of A to B is equal to the ratio of heights of C to D. So let's just capture that as our ratio. It's telling us what the ratio is. So A over B equals C over D. Right? And if plant C is 54, what's D? So we know A, B, and C. A is going to be 20, B is going to be 12, that's going to equal C, which is 54, and the unknown here is D. Cross multiply, 20 times D equals 54 times 12, which is 684. Divide by 20, and you get D equals 32.4, which is answer A. All right, in the last problem, we've got to, we don't have choices, we've got to figure out the answer. Um, so horsepower and watts are directly proportional. When it says directly proportional, that means that um, when we divide them, the proportions are going to be equal to each other. So five horsepower equals 3,730 watts. So how many watts in two horsepower? So we're gonna set up 
horsepower in the numerator. We're going to do watts in the denominator. So we've got 5 horsepower, 3,730 watts, and that's going to equal 2 horsepower and an unknown number of watts. So cross multiply, 5 times x equals 3730 times 2, or 7460. Divide both sides by 5, and you get x equals 1492 as your answer. Thanks for watching, and if you have an SAT coming up, good luck. I'm going to continue to add SAT material. So if you'd like to subscribe right up here, you can get notification of when new material comes out. And I've got some more stuff for you to watch right here. Thanks again for watching and please come back soon.